Yahtzee! Yahtzee! <laughs> what a good start. That's a good start. I never get Yahtzee. Oh, that's, that's a very good start. Watch that. I get four of the I'm going to get a large stick. Two, three, four, five, six. What? Did I just say a large straight and that's what I got? Yes, you did. What? Oh my gosh. Wow. Nice. And those, these are both the hardest for me to ever get. Keep the camera rolling, boy, I'm telling you. Small straight it is. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, right? Small straight, done. Yes. You had a large straight again, but... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is a knife. This oh, is not your knife. No. It will go with threes. <laughs> Going in a row here. I won't have to do it. Oh my gosh. Big. <laughs> Nicely done. Yay. Large straight. Ooh, wouldn't that be something? Uh -huh, that that, uh, that's good three. That's so. 12, right? Mm -hmm. Two, seven. I can't read this here. Is it 63 or higher? Yeah. That's right. Is it 35 is the bonus? Yes. All right, thank you. Did you add your bonus? 326. Wow, did you add your bonus in? Yeah. That's it. Wow. That is the highest I've ever gotten. 326? Nice. Nice. Good job. Thank Congratulations. You.
whisk with this whisk by hand it's gonna kinda go ch -ch -ch -ch. One, we are in another week of Hoga. Um, I have been so elated to bring this to you. We are enjoying it um, here at home at my house. Uh, we are trying to incorporate more of the Danish way. While I'm on that subject, I just want to say um, last week I kept saying that it was a Swedish custom. I was corrected um, by that and I'm very grateful for that. They are absolutely correct. I do not want to offend. Um, it is, in fact, a Danish custom, um, but the Swedish are known to practice it often. I am glad that they had called me on that because I knew that in my mind and I... <laughs> 
I do know that and I say it often, but for some reason on the video I kept honed in on that Swedish. My husband is part Swedish, so I was focused on that. So my apologies, it is actually a Danish custom. But the Swedish and many people all over the world do practice it. I wanted to bring up a couple of things. I wanted to go more into it this week. Our videos for this year are not going to be all about Huga. Um, it's actually about being very intentional with our design and our way of living, which is a form of Huga living. And Huga decor is very intentional, very minimalistic, and um, we are all for it. My family and I are all ready to be rid of our clutter, uh, mental clutter, physical clutter, and also around the home. No more for us. It's definitely a design style that a lot of people like and wonderful, go for it. But for us, a lot of accessories and knickknacks, it's lovely. I had that style for a long time. It does make it harder to clean. It's a lot of clutter around and it gets very dusty. So for me, I'm learning that I would like a more clean home. Not that I want it sterile and not designed at all, but the Scandinavian design is definitely for me now at this stage in my life. And the one book that has really encouraged me and inspired me, you may have heard it, you may have not, um, but it's The Little Book of Hoga. It's really the most darling little book and it has all the practices um, it lists all the secrets to the happy living um, in that Danish custom. I am going to talk about it a little bit and incorporate it into our home and tell you how we incorporate it. This will be a week that I will talk about more in detail with the elements of Huga living and Huga decor. However, the whole year will be based on very intentional design and you will see our change of our design around our home. We have done the farmhouse cottage as I mentioned last week and even a little bit of beachy design. It's lovely. I do um, love that and if that's still your style that's wonderful but for us we are really into a very min minimalistic decor this year. One of the things that I'm going to tackle right now is tell you some of the practices with one of the first things, as I'm opening my book here, is lighting, I believe. And yes, light. So light is maybe more task lighting, more soft lighting, um, especially candles. Um, they are very big on candles. We have a very busy life here in New England. Um, everything tends to be, at this time of year, it seems to be darker in a lot of places around the world. But the lighting is um, the sunlight, the morning sun comes out later in the morning. The sun goes down again earlier in the evening. So we don't have a lot of hours of daylight. People tend to get sad, they call it, that seasonal depression. Me, I do feel like I'm affected a little bit. So lighting is very important. Every time there's sun outside, I'm out there, no matter what time of the year. I definitely like to at least get 10 minutes every morning, and sometimes I'll stay out for an hour, sometimes I'll incorporate a walk, sometimes it's just being around my yard, um, even in the snow. I love to have that uh, sunlight. It's very important to get your circadian rhythm in check, and it's also very, very good for your spirits, very good for your mood. Um, when we're in the house and it's a drab, dreary day, and I, I still try to get some nature in, but it's not a lot of sunshine, I do have what's called a happy light. I do have a light that I put on that's very, very bright, and you don't look directly in it, but you have it near you, and it gives you that beautiful, warm, sun-like feel, and it really does affect my mood. It really does make me happier. So that's one little tip. If you can do that, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it everywhere. And they're usually pretty affordable. There are more expensive versions, but they're, the one I have was quite affordable. It was definitely under $30, I believe, and it works wonderfully. Light in general, um, being more of a task lighting, a softer light, candle light, by the fire with maybe a few candles, that's a lovely, soft, warm, cozy feeling. Um, there's definitely not bright overhead lights. Um, I'm really not for that anymore. I wouldn't mind walking into someone's home and it's a little bit on the darker side and maybe there was a candle burning or a light 
uh, lamp was lit. I think it's very warm and cozy and welcoming. It's too busy, I think, when the light's too bright and in your face. So that's one. They give you a lot of wonderful tips in here. They also talk about things like uh, food and drink, um, how you take care of your body. Obviously, taking care of yourself and nourishing yourself is very important. One of the things that I love to do at this time of year is do a lot of baking and cooking. I do enjoy all times of the year, but I do tend to cook more outside on the barbecue. I do tend to have lighter meals that are maybe colder meals in the summer and late spring. But when fall comes around and all winter and even into the early spring, I love warm, cozy foods like squashes and I love um, stews and broths and soups, uh, one pot meals, um, roasts in the oven, things like that. But it's very important that you nourish your, your body and that you stay warm and cozy and you want, um, obviously you need your nutrients, um, but you really want to have that cozy feeling. And there is nothing more welcoming and cozy than having something baking in the oven. That is a big thing for us. And I'm glad to say that it's also a Huga custom. So that's one thing we've always been practicing. Um, also drink. Um, my husband and I aren't big drinkers um, as far as alcoholic beverages, but I say it's great if you wanted to enjoy one once in a while, but for us, we tend to have beverages that are more nourishing, um, vitamin and nutrient filled. Um, we do drink mineral waters. We do um, have a filter in our home to um, have clean water. We do have teas and on occasion, I will have rare, rare, rare occasion, maybe twice a year, I'll have a coffee. It doesn't affect me well, so I don't tend to have coffee often, but my husband and son love coffee, um, and my daughter does as well. Um, for us as a whole, and especially for me, I'm definitely a tea drinker, a um, lot of nourishing teas out there to try, especially decaffeinated, so that's a big one. They even have like a section of how to dress like a Dane, which is very sweet. Um, but very warm and cozy, comfy sweaters, um, sitting by the fire with a blanket, slippers and puffy socks, comfy socks, um, definitely warm and cozy uh, clothing. Even, I believe, even in the summer I was reading um, somewhere, I'm not sure if it was this book or somewhere else, even in the summer, it's very light, relaxing, loose clothing. It's not, it, you're not trying to... Um, dress with tight clothing and you know be uncomfortable. It's not about being showy. It's more about being very relaxed and comfortable in your own skin. Um, so I'm really all for that as well. The next thing is home. How your home is. Your home is, like I talked about last week, your home is the place to be. It is supposed to be your haven and you want to make it that way. So when you walk in the door, you always have a lovely uh, vibe in your home. There's always soft natural light. There's um, when you get home light some candles uh, Maybe put on a, a cozy lamp with a softer lighting um, When I'm cozying up and watching television um, I tend to wear my blue blocker glasses um, Especially in the evening, so I'm, I don't have that stimulation and it's more relaxing and my body can ease more into sleep I do tend to read a lot, so being home, I love to have the fire going, light a candle or two, have the blanket on and some cozy socks and slippers in my pajamas. Honestly, folks, if the minute I walk in the door, no matter what time of the day, there are times where at 2 in the afternoon I will put on a pair of pajamas. I am all about the cozy pajamas. I love to read books. I don't read a lot of excitable books books because um, I don't want it to ruin my calmness um, and that's what Hook is all about is remaining relaxed and comfy and cozy. But home in general should, should generally give you that vibe of being comfy and cozy and relaxed. So have a lot of relaxing comfy pillows and blankets around. That really helps. Another thing with Hoga is the design. There is definitely a design style. Uh, fireplace, like I mentioned, is definitely key, but also they love to pair vintage with new, um, which has always been 
my vibe. I love that. The rustic design where it's so rustic, where it has that farmhouse look, that's great. But for me personally, it's I'm going more into the more sleek design. But a little bit of rusticness is really nice. But also that vintage feel. Like they love to mix the new with the old. And um, the Danish really are inspiring to me. They really love to preserve and recycle and reduce waste and I have been all about that for a long time so really really inspired by their customs and I'm going to continue that more often this year but definitely we'll be incorporating more vintage into some newer simple lines for decor. Um, there will be items um, I will be keeping. I'm not getting rid of all of my furniture, but I will be embodying a lot of that lifestyle and trying to switch it over. You still have some of the same pieces, but it will give a different feel to it, hopefully. It might be redoing the item if it's a wooden piece of furniture, or it might be I recover something, or it might be brand new furniture with different lines, but I'm going to be incorporating a lot of vintage. I'm a big fan of Facebook Marketplace and a big fan of buying vintage and real estate sales, tag sales, um, hand-me-downs from others. Um, I am particular, but I love incorporating that into our lives, but definitely more softer fabrics as well. So Hoga is all about um, nature, and bringing the outside in. So a lot of your forest that I'm lucky to have around me, that forest, I will put branches, leaves, pine cones all around the house. I'll put even branches and stems around in vases. Um, almost always they are real, but on occasion I'll even find beautiful faux flowers or faux stems or leaves or branches, and I will put them in as well. But I do love to collect. The natural sources. They also smell wonderful. If you have a lot of pine cones like I do, tons this year for some reason, um, I do put them in a bowl and you can, especially if you grab it sometimes and you smell your hands, you can smell that pine which is so lovely. Um, it's not just at Christmas time with the Christmas tree. We love to have that uh, foresty smell in the house so having some items around the home is really lovely for that. Uh, but bringing the nature from outside into the home is really a beautiful custom. Ceramics and, uh, like I said, vintage wear, but even like ceramics and pottery, um, it's a beautiful part of their design, and I love having that around. I will definitely be looking more into that, especially when estate sale shopping. A wonderful practice, hygge practice for you, is to maybe get back to the art of writing letters. I do love to write letters. I love to write uh, for fun books every now and then and I love to use a pen and a paper um, but even even on your computer it's really lovely to write a story write an email um, but preferably I love the old-fashioned writing a letter sticking an envelope and mailing it to someone there's something really special still about that it's a lovely practice and who doesn't like to receive mail so um, that's a, a good option if you're looking for maybe an activity to do. Writing in your journal, writing in um, a notebook, something that gives you a sense of peace to work out your anxieties and worries of the day. It's a good practice anyway, but um, it's a great hook of custom to write in general, whether it's to write in a journal or write to someone you care about. Listening to music, I tend to lately listen to a lot of calming music, whether it's classical, which is a big one for me lately, classical music. Um, on occasion, I even like to listen to opera, but opera, yeah, I have to be in a certain mood for it. It can get very loud, um, so I tend to uh, listen to that at certain moments, but classic Classical music is really nice and soft and relaxing as background music. Um, I love to hear like the orchestras playing. Um, I love to listen to jazz, very smooth um, jazz. I love old jazz preferably, but even some of the new jazz, I like that. You can find really great sources even on YouTube. They'll have a beautiful scene and they'll be, or a fireplace um, and they'll have uh, the crackle of the fire along with very soft music. Sometimes it's just the sound of the crackle of the fireplace. It's actually what I do sometimes to get myself to sleep if I'm having trouble sleeping. Instead of watching a, a show that maybe wakes me up, this is a great uh, practice to help you fall asleep at night. 
and again writing in your journal those are great things reading a book a very relaxing book before bed and never fails my eyes start to droop my head starts to bob and I'm ready to go to sleep so if you do that on, a, on your television and you don't want to just shut it off um, I would definitely, if you can find a TV with a timer on it, that's great because it'll just automatically shut off and it's a great thing to help you on those days when you can't sleep. Another thing I use is a sound machine. Um, I will put it on a crackling fire or a babbling brook and it's really lovely to help you get to sleep at night. Looking through old photo albums is a wonderful activity. Um, something that brings back happy memories is lovely um, when you're having a very stressful day. Something like that can really brighten your spirits. Less technology is always a great um, way of practicing hygge. Um, maybe sitting and reading more often, taking walks in nature, um, playing games with your family and friends, um, going out places. Um, but generally for us, um, we do like to go out on occasion, but generally we love to take drives, take walks in nature, and be home with each other and play games all day and watch, uh, binge watch some shows that are favorite, uh, our favorite shows that I mentioned last week, or even a, a one wonderful movie every now and then that's a favorite, or maybe you want to try a new one, a new movie. Um, but reading, I have books that I reread all year, um, throughout the year, and also I love discovering new books. Um, if you have any recommendations, I'm always looking for new titles put them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your recommendations. Creating spa moments is a really nice way to relax. You don't always have to spend a lot of money to go to a spa. Um, just having certain things on hand are really, really great um, to help you feel relaxed. Um, I love to do facials and have a mask on hand. I do love to um, have very natural makeup, um, but sometimes even with that, it can be um, very rough on the skin and it can feel like you just want to have a nice clean fresh face and you just need that extra little uh, you need that extra little care for yourself um, and having a, a lovely mask and maybe some cucumbers to put under your eyes um, a nice ritual every day I have in the morning I, I get up and I gargle and I take care of my vagus nerve by massaging the mastoid bone behind your ear and I, um, I do my tongue scraper and brush my teeth. I wash my face. I use very natural basic bar soaps for my face and I have an eye cream, um, a toner, and a moisturizer. And they're all natural and gluten-free and vegan. And I really love having that fresh start to my day. And I usually don't put makeup on um, most of the day, if not all of, the, all of the day, unless I'm filming or I'm going somewhere. Um, but it's nice to have that. And every now and then I'll add uh, those gold eye patches that I'll put under my eye to help with puffiness, especially if I'm not feeling so great um, or I'm just, I didn't get enough sleep. That in a mask has been really nice. I love to have, if you've ever seen those little rakes, I think they call them, but you put them on your head and you kind of very lightly press on that. I tend to get a lot of migraines and that really helps, but even sometimes I just want to relax and release some tension in my head. That's really lovely for like a little scalp massage. Um, if you are able to afford to go to a spa, that's fantastic, or go to a a relaxing place where uh, maybe a hairstylist does that type of service, wonderful. I just choose not to spend that and I like to do things at home and relaxed. Um, treat yourself to a manicure or pedicure. It's a wonderful practice to make yourself feel really great. Um, I have a wonderful husband that helps me with my feet massage and um, also I tend to give myself a manicure. Um, it's really important. Take up a couple's massage with your your partner in life, um, it's great because it helps you relax and you learn all the right techniques to release that tension. And you know what, what a great way to bond with your partner and not feel that you have to spend a lot of money somewhere, which kind of defeats the purpose of being relaxed, doesn't it, when you're all stressed out about the cost of it. So when you can be relaxed in your own home, it's just a lovely, intimate way to be with your partner. So 
I recommend that as well. So once again, I will recommend this book. I just was telling you some of the ways of the customs here at the winter time, but they do have a section in here for all year round, how to practice and when you're at work, whatever it may be. There's wonderful, wonderful ideas in here. I really highly recommend this book. Um, you can find it on Amazon, uh, bookstores, it's everywhere. So there's that. I can put a link for it if you'd like for it from Amazon here. One of the rules of Huga, there are 10 real big rules. One of them is atmosphere, having that cozy, relaxing atmosphere and minimalistic and serene is very important. Presence, uh, your presence uh, is very, very important. Um, how you feel around others, how people are making you feel around you. Um, every, just being even present in the moment is very, very important. Um, for me, I've realized um, I was always looking towards the past, maybe mistakes I've made and how to improve that, or looking to the future, always setting goals. It's important to set goals. It really is important. But I feel that um, when you live in the moment, you are able, I think, feel like life slows down a little bit. And I think you're able to embody that, uh, that spirit and, and be happy and joyful more when you're in that moment. I do feel that time slows down a lot. So being present in your life and having choosing the people that you're around is very important. If it doesn't feel good to be around somebody or it feels very toxic, it's probably time to move on from that uh, from that relationship and don't feel guilty about that because it's important that you are happy and you can be a better self to others if you're better to yourself personally I'm learning that in my old age uh, pleasure things that bring you joy um, it, it's a practice that a lot of different customs, if you've ever heard of Marie Kondo, um, she's fantastic and she helps you organize your home, but she also talks about things that bring you joy. Um, if you hold an item and it's not bringing you joy, it's time to move on from that. I think it's a little more in depth than that personally, um, but I feel that way about life in general. If things aren't joyful to you, um, they're not bringing you happiness, it's time to move on from that. Um, but I think you'll be a happier person too if you surround yourself with things that are joyful, even activities. If you like to go jumping out of planes, you should do it if it brings you joy. If you love to just walk on a beach, you should do that. Whatever that means for you, um, you should do that. Equality. There's nothing to be said there. You just know what that means and that's important. Gratitude, and I'm going to add even mindfulness to that. Um, gratitude is really important. Um, getting up every morning, uh, you, you don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to write it down, although writing in a journal, having a gratitude journal is really lovely. But just thinking it every morning, thinking about the things that you're very grateful for and expressing that to people on occasion. Um, also, Receiving it is really lovely, but most importantly is just every day thinking, what am I grateful for? Who am I grateful for? That just sets the tone for the whole day. And being mindful of everything that you do, intentional in your design and what you eat and how you take care of your body, um, who you are around, what you read, what how you dress, everything like that is very important. And you're being truthful to yourself. So, And also, you feel better when you are very intentional with everything. You will feel like everything's set in place that you need. Harmony, not much to be said there either, but living in harmony is very important with others in general. Having um, a lot more of a relaxed ideal about life and people and just uh, living in harmony, most importantly, with nature. Nature is very important. Um, remember that trees give you that oxygen. They provide shelter and shade, and oh my goodness, are they beautiful. Some drop their leaves, some do not, and they're still lovely to look at. So remember that. We have to live in harmony with each other. So take care of nature. Um, don't destroy it. Take care of it. Plant a garden when it's that time of year. Plan out your garden in the winter. It's something to get very excited about, but um, take care of yourself and take care of the environment around you. It's all we have, so you want to take care of it. Comfort. Uh, very important to stay comfort um, comfortable. Um, having, like I said before, cozy blankets, cozy pillows, cozy socks, um, 
all kinds of wonderful uh, cozy clothing. Um, even the textures that you choose. Make sure they feel good on your skin and they make you feel comfortable and relaxed. There, there's, it's never going to be a nice um, experience for you if you're wearing something that's uncomfortable, um, maybe fabric or it's tight. Um, it, it just won't feel good to be wearing that. So it's obviously something that you want to practice regularly. But comforting your own skin as well, taking care of yourself is very important. Like I said, take care of those, uh, maybe have some days during the week where you just take care of yourself and give yourself spa moments during the day. Why not? Truce. I love that. Um, but I will also say be true to yourself. You don't always have to try to be the person that always tries to make things better. So don't be afraid to speak your mind, but you can do it in a nice way. Um, maybe make a truce with yourself as well, not to um, get worked up about certain things. That's something I'm working hard on. Togetherness. Togetherness is great. Um, being around people that you really care about and that make you happy is really important. Um, I have a daughter that I don't see often. Um, she's older and has her own home, so every now and then I try to get together with her, and that brings me a ton of joy to see what she's been up to. Um, she's very busy, so I don't get to speak to her often. So uh, for me, um, I loved, I really enjoy those moments when we get to be together and have mother-daughter time or family time when we're all back together. Um, I love to have time with my son as well. Um, He's a lot of fun, he has a great sense of humor, and um, he's very talented. So we tend to, um, sometimes he'll play his guitar and I'll sing with him. Sometimes we're just playing games. You know, whatever that may be, it's really nice. And of course, time with my husband has been very joyful. He's a little under the weather today, so he's not here with me right now. Um, he's resting, but um, that time with him is, is really lovely. I really enjoy um, we'll have date nights, we'll have t a days in where we relax. Um, sometimes we're just sitting by the fire or taking walks, romantic walks in the uh, nature in our yard. Um, it's very important to have that. And most importantly, myself and my family, we all love to play games together and laugh together. It's a joyful time. So togetherness is really important. But those are my, my people in my life that I really enjoy time with. I enjoy time with a lot of people in my life but those are my that's my team that's my my joy that family of mine so remember that whoever it is maybe it's a great friend that you love to spend time with that's really important to have that maybe you have a favorite pet time with them is really lovely as well shelter take care of that shelter it's not just a place that you live um, but you want it to feel very cozy and happy and joyful. But it is, it's a shelter. Keep it warm. Keep up on things. If you have some things going on with your home, whether it be um, a pipe is burst or you have mold or you have um, things are falling apart, take care of that home because that's the place you go to and you need to have, um, you need to have that uh, reliable shelter. You want to feel very relaxed and comfortable. This home is your home. This is not about um, how it looks to other people. I love to share my design with others. I love to show off something that I'm really proud of. But most importantly, it, no matter who comments on something or it's not for everybody, that's okay. It's the home that I have to look at and the home that I'm comfortable with. I feel the same for you as well. It doesn't matter what the design style is out there, who says what's in, what's out. All that matters is that you're comfortable in that home. It will change how you feel about just about everything if you're not comfortable coming home. So make sure you surround yourself with things that you love, a design that you love, and that you're comfy and cozy and relaxed. It's lovely if other people like it, but it should be about what you enjoy. The most important thing is what I've learned from Hoka is enjoy life's quieter pleasures. Maybe relax more with soft music. You know, slow down a bit. Live in the moment, the now. That's really important. Um, it's not about keeping up with the rat race. I've been around most of my life around very stressful people, and boy, do they get worked up about a lot of things. And to me, it just does not bring me joy. And it makes me want to be around those people less. Um, I found myself getting stressed out, and I knew a few years ago that it was time to change the way I look at things, the way I feel um, 
the way I do things. Um, and my health has been happier and better for it. So I'm a happier person now because of that. So I really love that that's really the Hoga lifestyle. It's really about living in that moment and slowing down. And I feel like it probably will help us live longer too. So a Hoga Krog, which is really cool that I'm learning, it's a little nook, a nook of a place to be comfy and not to um, notice that the time passing. So it's a time where you kind of get lost in your thoughts and you forget like, oh geez, it's two hours went by. That's a good sign that you're doing it right. Um, you don't want to be so scheduled that you miss life passing you by. It's okay to spend an hour looking at the trees or watching the birds outside. It's okay to do that. I understand we live in a world where you can't always do that, but you should take time every day. So what if you're a little late on your dinner plans? Um, try to slow down and watch. So many parents I know are always rushing out. Their kids are signed up for all kinds of activities and sports, and that's okay if that brings you joy, but it's really important not to keep going, going, going all the time. I don't know if you've done this as a kid. Um, for me, I, I remember doing that where in the summer I would lay down on the ground and just look up at the sky, or I'd throw a stick. We used to live near a stream. I would throw a stick into the water and just watch it go down the stream. Uh, it's those little simple things that only children seem to pay attention to um, that I've had to remind myself to go back to that. Um, don't forget to kind of let the world kind of do its thing behind you and just pay attention in that moment. It's okay to do that, to get lost in that time. Make sure you practice that. That's really important. So Hoga Decor, um, which I will be starting um, this week. So I'm going to add some elements, but I really just wanted to talk about Hoga in general. But I wanted to um, and give you a little bit of a sense of what we do throughout the day. Um, but I will be starting next week really showing actual decor from each room. And I'm probably going to tackle a room at a time and changing things up a little bit. And I'll be changing it throughout the year, adding elements to those rooms as well. Um, we will be redoing certain rooms, don't worry, we're still all about that, um, but we will be focusing on little places and vignettes and nooks, uh, the Hoga Krug. Um, we will be focusing on those as well, um, a lot. But the one thing I'm learning is to create welcoming spaces, um, you know, making it very serene and relaxing. Um, again, not just for other people, but for yourself. You're the ones that live there the most. Um, so creating those spaces are very important. Spending time with your loved ones, um, whether it's at home or out somewhere or visiting someone at their home, that's really a nice thing to do. It really lifts your spirits. Minimalism, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, not having a lot of clutter. My tendency um, used to be to shop for the newest thing and have all kinds of appliances out and I've noticed it's really been quite stressful. So for me, slowly as I'm getting rid of things, I'm feeling much more relaxed and I realize I don't need a lot of those things. I have started this year creating piles, toss or, or sell, um, a donate, and some things that I decide to keep, I find where I want to place it, do I find joy with it, and it goes back into the decor. But it also want, I want it to embody that feeling of being minimalistic. I don't want to have to do all kinds of things to preserve it and clean it, and I don't want to have to be so cautious with it that I, I don't get to relax with that item. If I'm always tense that someone could knock it over, it could break. Clean lines and keeping spaces cozy, but just not having an excess amount of items around the home. Soft textures, neutral colors, um, texture is really important, but the softer the feel, almost like your clothing, um, the, your furniture is like that as well. Um, that sofa you have, that, that blanket or pillow you have should be very relaxing and it should be very soft and comfortable. But even the look of it, not just the feel of it, should be when you look at it, you go, oh, geez, I want to sit right there and relax. You should be able to envision yourself doing that. And when you finally do, it should be like heaven for you if you've had a long, stressful day. Your home should be the place that you can't wait to get back to and relax in. The neutral colors, um, it's not about busy colors. I mentioned that last week, and I, although that's lovely and I love that design, when I'm in my home, I'm tending to go more neutral. And I've been doing that for a lot of years. It's been a lot of the blues and grays, um, which are cooler colors, and that's fine. But I am starting to see the joy in maybe the warmer tones, but still neutral, like the tans 
and the light browns and the creams, maybe a green thrown in there, embodying that little bit of nature into your home has been really nice to go back to, and I'm working on that this year. Elements of nature that I mentioned, having uh, branches or pine cones or flowers from your garden anywhere in nature, bringing that inside. Anything that reminds you of nature even, like wood, having, but the, I do notice they love lighter tones. It's okay no matter what you decide what tone you want. I personally like the lighter tones, but I sometimes like darker tones. I like mixing them up, but those little elements of nature are really important, especially wood. Having a lived-in feel and um, you don't want it so uptight that people are afraid to come in and you know, sit on your sofa or touch a surface or afraid to, you know, walk around in, in certain shoes or whatever. It should make a, it should make you really feel relaxed. You want it to feel lived in. It's not a showcase. It's not a showroom. It should be a relaxing home for you to live in, but also that people feel relaxed and comfortable visiting. But also that feeling of warmth that I mentioned, that soft lighting with the candles and the task lighting with the special soft lamps and having um, the blankets and the pillows and the fire going, the candles burning, all of that gives you that feeling of warmth and coziness. Luka is another word, um, L-Y-K-K-E, -K -K -E, and that uh, means it's their word for joy and happiness. I love that. Um, you every day try to find joy. So my mission in life lately is every day to find, even when I'm stressed out or I'm upset about something, um, maybe I'm not feeling so joyful that day, I try to remember the Luca in my life, the joy and happiness, and try to embody that in something that you do. If it gives you joy to dance around the kitchen and sing out loud and um, or maybe watch a comedy show or read the comics, whatever that be for you. If it's joyful to go outside, uh, make sure you uh, do that every day at some point, even if it's just for a few minutes, if that's all you have that day, that really sets the tone for the whole day. Or maybe you couldn't in the beginning and you went out to work or you went somewhere like a doctor's appointment was a little stressful. Do what you do when you get home that brings you joy and it should change your mood instantly. So Scandinavian design is all about simple lines without sacrificing beauty. It's it's not about having, it's so simple that you don't have elements of things that you know, remind you of a nice comfy home. It shouldn't be so clean and sterile that you don't have any warmth. It's all about that warmth and net neutral colors and the beautiful lighting, but it's very simple lines. It's not a lot of busy, um, it's not traditional style at all, Victorian style, it's not that, and again, lovely if that's what your design is. Um, I think whatever design style you are, you can incorporate hygge into your life no matter what. But if you're looking for a Scandinavian decor or that hygge decor, it's very important that you know what the elements are and very important for you to feel happy in your home. And that's just about what I have for today for any tips for you. I hope this helps. I hope it wasn't boring and I didn't drag on for a long time, but I hope you like these tips. There's so much more about Huga decor, Huga lifestyle. These are just this, um, the basic principles that I wanted to bring to you and that I'm learning along the way. So with that being said, I'm going to um, say goodbye and say I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have any tips or any comments on anything or any questions or you want to have anything specific, links to anything, please um, mention it. And I will put a link for this book uh, um, under in, underneath in the comments um, in the description. I will have that just because I really do recommend this book and it's a lovely coffee table book with that i hope you all have a joyful happy relaxing comfy day and a lovely week and when i come back next week we're going to tackle some decorating so i hope you enjoy your little huga moment today and take care of yourself thanks for watching bye